several made-up Keebler elf guys refer to one of their gods as the Great She. I recommend you start doing the same. It'll add spice to family gatherings. I'm Spike. Uh, I'm Kel, and I'm just thinking about Baldur's Gate. Uh, that's, that's consumed my brain now. Um, that's it. I prefer my family gatherings to have as little spice as humanly possible, so no thank you. For me. What's up? I'm eating a uh, bowl of rice yeah. and toppings. Uh, I, I'm all moved in um, to my new place, um, and I just have to hang up artwork. Uh, that's the only oh, thing nice. left to do. Um, Thank you for coming, I, I, everyone. Welcome to episode 69, the eyebrow waggle episode. Yep. Well, not anymore. Um, now it's a dick without precedent. Now it's a dick without precedent. Yeah. Um... I got um, a new TV that has a matte screen, so there's no glare from the window. Oh, neat. Uh, okay, I have now. I will doodle in a second. I am so freaking tired. Hello, Salty Coffee. Hello, Net Fisher. Hello, Aether Tales. Hello, Nudist. Thank you for coming. I will actually, I haven't, oh my god, this has been like an unbelievable week for me. I haven't had a chance to even get started on the next page, but for folks just joining us, um, yeah, we got, a, we got a little bit of a lore dump on the last page of Placata, where we learned a little bit about what Eki believes, and Eki believes in a, a very grudge-holding god, uh, and he refers to this god as the Great She. And he thinks the great she is going to basically grind uh, Bettany and Ta to powder for what they're about to do. Someone on Blue Sky correctly guessed uh, they are about to go tomb raiding. They're about to Lara Croft. They are about to go and steal some shit from dead people. I'm going to be right back. There's a monster on the counter with my name on it. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had both a monster and a Red Bull today, so I am I am playing with fucking fire. I I got uh my monster right next to me. Um, I'm so fucking I, tired. I am drug addict, one and all. How many caffeine? Um, I I started Baldur's Gate. Um, and now that's all I want to do is play it. Um, fair enough. If I, I drink I'm this already... entire can, I'll be over what's considered the healthy limit of caffeine. Um. Spike, what's mm -hmm. fun about Baldur's Gate is you can make a default blank slate character, or you can play as a character called the Dark Urge, which is basically you have a voice in your head that's telling you to kill. <laughs> yep. And um, you stop dramatically every now and then, and close your eyes, and lift a hand to the side of your brow, and just wobble ever so slightly while the voice in your head is like, you should kill. Um, there should the, be a version you're, you're where there's just a little, a, like a little, like just a creature voice. Like just things that. Like the first time you try to loot a body if you're playing Dark Urge is the narrator is like, for some reason, the sight of this dead body gives you joy. <laughs> um, and... Um, and so you can tell, what I thought was really funny is you can tell all the people you're traveling with. So sometimes I have a constant urge to murder people. And they're all like, well, thoughts aren't actions and everyone thinks about murder sometimes. <laughs> or um, just mur make sure you murder the right people and like kind of dismiss you being like... No, seriously, I'm constantly driven to murder all the time. And then a cutscene happens, and there is a murder that you committed. Like, you, you wake up, and you're covered in blood, and there's a dead girl with intestines hanging out. Um, and, and then everyone's like, oh my god, what the fuck? And it's like, listen, I tried to warn y'all that I was constantly thinking about doing this, and that murders were going to happen. And you didn't listen. Um, so this is on you. Uh oh. Hmm. No one Ooh. I am watching Let's Play Baldur's Gate has taken that path, so that is news. Oh, I should do something real quick. Yes, you should. Um, I might, you don't um, know me. I accidentally, tr 
I Hello, accidentally Alan triggered Lord. a thing um, too soon, so I might start yeah. over and stream it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I understand that urge because, F, like, dozens at this point, people have recommended that I play Disco Elysium, and I understand why. But I just, I rolled some real shitty snake eyes very early on, and I cut off a lot of things, I, I think. And the urge to just restart is very strong. Well, in Disco Elysium, you didn't actually cut off that many things. Um, um, Disco Elysium is a rare game where, like, sometimes the funner bit is if you fail. Um, okay. Yeah, I, the thing uh, that is most memorable about Disco Elysium to me so far is there's a bit where, you know, the drunken idiot detective that you're playing you can hit on someone on the phone and i'm one of those people who is like no that is not the sensible choice i will choose the sensible choice and so i i told you know the game no he is not going to hit on the fucking secretary on the phone he is not going to decide to do that stupid thing and then the game literally goes are you sure it's a really good little subplot <laughs> like okay fine uh, it's a bit not coming. it's yeah uh the, so it's stuff like um, you get told that you have to pay for trashing your hotel room, mm -hmm. and one of the options is that you can like run away while giving him the finger, um, <laughs> but you have to like roll. I forget what roll you have to do, um, and if you fail that roll, you get a very funny scene. Um, <laughs> Which is basically him crashing into the lady in a wheelchair. Um, uh, by the way, uh, I'm it, oh, sorry. Oh, uh, and um, the 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 thing is, it's not that I rolled bad in Dark Urge; it's that I accidentally triggered a thing too early, um, and um, that meant that I can't do another thing. Um, so I need to restart and make sure I do the other thing that I wanted to do earlier in the game. Um, hmm. uh, the, the girl whose intestines my character pulled out, um, there's a little thing you can do with her before you rip out her intestines. Um, Fantastic. And uh, uh, so that's, I was like, oh, I need to restart so I can do her little subplot before I murder her. Um, Mm -hmm. so um, I explain immortals being idiots eventually entertainment overrides survival that's actually really sensible yeah that's if um, that you commented in a, the YouTube thing yeah uh, I can see okay. um, so yeah uh, so I made um, a tiefling bard dark urge um, and I might stream some of it on Sunday mornings um, if people want to watch me play on uh, Twitch uh, this Sunday. Though I guess it would be afternoon for everyone who's not on the West Coast. Um, uh, yeah, I was just going to say that, uh, by the way, y'all, I am in a mood. I'm just drawing whatever I want right now. Well, you're allowed. No, I'm just saying because last time I took requests. Yeah. That's okay, I'm though. just giving okay. fair warning. This is just Amanda indulge. Amanda yeah, draw whatever. When anyone, when any artist signs on, folks, and goes, oh, I'll take requests, it, it is them being kind and magnanimous. No, it wasn't. I was looking for ideas because my brain was fried. Oh. They were doing me favors by telling me what to do. It's only, I'm just way, way too selfish for that, so. Hmm, fair. But today I just I'm want very... to draw my dumb children. Yeah, I know the fucking feeling. I always want to draw my dumb children. Um, I especially want to get to this page, because this is the page where I think a lot of people are going to be like, what? Because it's going to... Uh, you don't actually understand their marsupials until this page, I think. Um, have luck. Um, like I said, uh, my Dark Urge is also a bard. Uh, it's a tiefling bard um, who is blue and has red hair. Um, and then after... I was playing for a bit. I realized that uh, they have Demona's coloring, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lean into that. Um, and um, 
Uh, I gave him like goat horns and a, a nose ring. Uh, having fun with the character. Like, uh, I wish there was a little bit more variety in the character creator. Um, but I understand why they didn't do that. Um, because it would probably be too hard to model every single possible body type. Um, for all those fucking scenes. Plus, if you want to just fuck around, there's always the Dragon's Dogma character creator. Yeah. Uh, what's very cute is if you play as a dragonborn, your love interest kisses you on the nose. Aww. Okay. Yeah. Little, little snoot kiss. Uh. Yeah, I'm not very far in watching my Let's Plays of that game because uh, the person I'm watching play it is a the oft-mentioned on this fucking podcast, Pete Complete. And Pete mm -hmm. is very thorough, and as a result, he is very slow as the complete suggests. So he, he uploads like infrequent one hour kind of things. And he does everything possible in that like part of the game in one go. So that takes a lot of, um, a lot of forethought. Yeah. Um, I'll probably, um, uh, so I got a really cool sword at the beginning of the game and saved right after I got it. So I'll probably start my Let's Play uh, when they crash on the beach um, and not the actual beginning of the game. Um, but the, before that's just the tutorial anyway. Um, Pete Complete um, will need to play the game multiple times to complete get everything. Uh, Fair enough. It's, um, because the reason I found out that I was accidentally triggering the murder early is, um, because there's a scene that to get it, you have to go to a certain spot before you find out Asterian's a vampire, and that's very obvious, like... So you gotta, like, do it really early in the game, but crossing a certain bridge is what triggers the murder to happen. Um, okay. So I might not be able to do both in the same playthrough. Yeah, probably not. I like that brush mint. Thank you. It is one I kind of made to mimic a specific kind of ink washing I used to do, um, where I would, like... Uh, paint really thick lines with the ink washing and then use a wet brush to drag the shading out from the the inks like that and this is the brush is the closest I could get to approximate it and how it works is when I draw when I draw soft and thin it's really dark but when I press down hard it gets uh, larger and more transparent so I can kind of do really some blendy cool. stuff remember physical media crazy yeah i still do use it sounds yeah fake. i do too sounds fake i just don't do okay. it for certain things my comics obviously have been fully digital but god i dream <coughs> i dream of just going straight back to like inks and ink washes but i i know deep down my life and my situation like my desk is not made for moist arts it's the best way I can describe it. The moist uh, arts. Um, That's what I'm calling them from now on. Not physical media. Moist arts. Moist arts. Uh, Spike, Pete, com how far is Pete complete? Does he have everybody? Yeah. No, not far at all. Who does he have on his team so far? I, I have. I don't pay that kind of attention. I'm gonna be real, Kel. He has. Uh, a green lady, and he has a wizard, and he has an elf lady, and he has the fuck boy. And, I mean, yeah. he's got a bunch of people. I'm so a master of the, the moist arts. He's got, <laughs> he's, he's got all but two. Um, yes, okay. it's true. Cat plus paint and ink is a lot. Okay. So That's I recently okay. got my license plates changed, so I now have Illinois plates, and I got to keep my Texas plates. I was putting them on my desk until I could wash them, and Ravioli jumped up to lick them. So then I moved them to a shelf. She jumped onto the shelf to lick them. 
This cat licks license plates. I don't, I don't trust her around open bottles of ink. She sounds nasty. She is my awful little creature that I love with all my heart. Um, well, the green lady Spike, um, told me, uh, right after I murdered a girl, the green lady told my character that my stank was good and that she wanted to bone me. And it's like, really? Now? After <laughs> I just disemboweled this other girl? Fair enough. I mean, everyone's got their thing. Well, that's not kink shame. No kink shaming. Yeah. Um... But, uh, His proportions are off, but life. Look at her ticket! <laughs> she probably just misses the streets. Tomorrow's her gotcha day, I think. Aww. Yeah, tomorrow's her gotcha day when she jumped through my window. And now she's a horrible, spoiled mess. Completely. Yesterday, the weather was very nice, so I opened my windows to let all the nice air in. And today was all, yesterday was also the day, I think it was yesterday, this week has blended together for me, um, when all the Tomcats decided, oh, we're going to mark the brick walls by where I live. And so she was pissed all day. She was just like yowling and growling <laughs> and sitting in her, and loafing in she her. She was just like, those bastards. Yes. Marking too close to me. Get yes. out of here. Um, she had. She wanted no part of it. And while she was yowling and growling at them, she was loafed very comfortably in a fur blanket that's on top of a heated pad in her little window seat, where she also keeps her favorite toys. Just sitting no. in the lap of luxury, growling at the poor stray cats. I'd just like to. I'd like to point out this magic moment as it happens. Here is, I, I don't know if I want to say normal. Here is default proportions for guys in, in the model for uh, Clip Studio Paint. And here is Bettany. Isn't he wide? He is terribly wide. Uh, you're making the screen flash a lot by doing the things you're doing. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I, oh, it's it, because, so um, when you do that, the capture software kind of goes a little silly. Yeah, so I'm not actually seeing them next to each other. Um, no, 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 no. Spike dragged the model over to the other model to change it. It's basically oh. got new proportions now. Yeah, it's got new proportions. He got wide. He turned into a wide boy. He's okay. A, he's a wide boy. Okay. He's a wide child. Because this uh, is obnoxious, and I don't feel like trying to figure it out in a sketch. I don't think Twill's proportions are correct right now, but life me not care. I'm so tired. I haven't actually done any proper drawing much this week, and I'm sad about it. I've been doing, like, um, art things, what, but not drawing. What stuff to put in the frozen food section of the grocery store? French fries. Cheese. Cheese. Okay. And chicky bits. Everybody loves chicky bits. I did put in the, the nugs. Uh, I got so got nugs and I got fish sticks. Um, Everybody so loves fucking it. tired. Hips, what are they? I don't know. <laughs> um, long ass fucking legs. They are frankly too long. Yeah, I am... I'm in the period now where I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to have to break this man's bones to make the pose look good. Because sometimes that's a thing that's got to happen. There's a little thing you can check. I don't even remember what it's called. Let's see if I can find it. Okay. Um, bu -bu -bu pose. There is a thing you can... Joint angle limit. Okay. Yeah, there's this special little thing you can find in the subtool detail in Clip Studio Point Paint called Joint Angle Limit, and you use it when you're working with the mannequins. What it basically says is, if it is clipped on, it means that the range of motion for the mannequins is human, and if it's off, it can the the mannequin can just put itself into positions that make no fucking sense that would hurt a human that a human couldn't easily be in. That's my favorite and, thing about behind the scenes for like 3D animators is all the breaking of the characters they do. Oh yeah, yeah. Just to There's make a shot look better. 
Yeah, there is a guy who, um, he did a lot of actually really popular animations. I think he's working on murder drones right now, but he did, like, delete this tweet and, uh, like, a bunch of really cute little animations. And, uh, he... Is that Temmer? A, yeah, Kevin Temmer, I yeah. think his name is. And he did this whole thing where he showed how from fairy godparent, fair, fairly odd parents, fairly odd parents, the little boy from fairly odd parents, he showed how he would make him, you know, like move his head 180 degrees, but in 3D. And it was really fucking smooth. But of course, if you looked at it from any other angle, it looked terrible and insane. <laughs> But the thing is that every other angle doesn't really matter. It's about how it looks, you know, from the angle you're you're viewing it from. And that's kind of the lesson a lot of people are learning with working with 3D these days, especially in um, anime, I think. There's a lot of gouache and stretch that's going on in anime. Him body too days. big. Him body too big. It does feel nice to doodle, though. If you're not having fun, what's the fucking point? You could be miserable in a cubicle, right? I'll be honest, I'd rather work at McDonald's in a cubicle. <laughs> you get what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> you're just paraphrasing what I said last week. Exactly. Now to give the fancy boy fancy clothes. Bag of frozen dumplings. That sounds amazing. Net Fisher, I actually, the Iron Circus offices, who knows how long I'm going to be holding on to them, but for now, the Iron Circus offices are actually very, very close to Chinatown in Chicago. And one of the nicest perks of that is we are very close to a Chinese supermarket. And if you want any kind of frozen fish ball or dumpling or whatever, it's right there. I fucking love it. Mm, what kind of outfit? Mm. Something slutty. This is a child. Oh. Something kind of slutty. <laughs> no! Fuck <laughs> off! Something like Honey Boo Boo would wear. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> um, how do you spell bow like dumplings? B-A-O? Yeah. Okay. I always want to do B-O-A. Um... Uh, God, thank God for this fucking hand. My brain is fried. Um, my brain made a spike. Footy. I just looked up uh, Pete complete, and um, I he will murder that girl. Um, because okay. that is uh, yeah. Fair Give me an event. Thing. Give me an event. Bar mitzvah. No. A quinceanera. Quinceanera. Um. Remember one of those foofy quinceaneras? It's a dresses? dude, but thank you. No, uh, actually, he would wear one. So fuck it. Yeah. Circumcision. Circumcision. Spike, you're not helpful. Uh, you it's called a brisk is... spike. Yeah. Spike, the correct term for the ceremony is a brisk. Um... <laughs> not if he's just having it at the club. <laughs> then that's not a ceremony. No, that's a circumcision. Event. But Amanda asked for, like, uh, apparently, an event. Apparently, uh, Spike, here, we had to lower her volume last time, so give me a second. Oh, you ruined it. What? You ruined, I'm, I'm here, I'm here being so clever, and you're ruining it. What am I ruining? Here and now, no one can hear my clever. Now. People could hear you, they just said you were quiet. I had to turn you la down last time, because you, you were so too sad. loud last time. You're so sad, Amanda. Where is my mouse? I guess I would, will. Uh, like, well, he is four, no, he's 15, so he could have a quinceanera. <laughs> uh, where did I put, oh, I was using my phone for references because I have to. See oh, results is... closer. I'm not going to a quinceanera, Google. <laughs> I want to look at dresses. Longer perspective, that's what I want. This is the funnest thing on uh, um, on Clip Studio Paint. If you're like, 
Oh, I don't know. It's just like the pose doesn't feel interesting or extreme enough. Oh, these are ridiculous dresses. He fucking would. Or woo. With some changes. It, it just sort changes. of like subtly changes things to be more exaggerated. I don't know if I want this. Let's see. Or like. Good God, these are like those. Uh, oh, um. The cake dress. You know the Barbies that you make a cake. Yeah. Their cake dress out of. Mm -hmm. That's what these dresses yes. are. Barbie cake <laughs> dresses. That's why I suggested it. I was like, that sounds like a thing that Amanda would like to draw. Um, it is. That's going to be really difficult to get circumcised in. <sighs> just, just no. <laughs> Put a lot of napkins down. Um, Spike, have you played any of the newest update for RimWorld? Because <laughs> while we did talk about how Ooh, we're not the buying dress. Anomaly, um, here's we, the one I found it. They they did update like every a lot of other stuff. Um, so have you played it with the new updates? <laughs> I have not played it. No, no. I actually um I was doing a thing where I was like, you know, I'm going to try my best to preserve the playthrough I've got now, but it's too much work. I think I've admitted to myself it's too much nope, work. Wrong I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to just start a new colony and I'm going to just see what the new gameplay is like. He's a very fancy boy. He would wear ridiculous shit like this. With modifications, however. God, this is a ridiculous fucking dress. Um, Let me see if I can't start with a better one. I don't know if I like this one. It's not as... Oh, this is a hard to... Oh, fuck. I, maybe maybe I, I flew too close to this one. It's fucking... You've ruined it. I mean, not yet I haven't. I believe in you. Give it time. Someone should. Good lord. Okay. Sorry that you all tuned in for like fucking 30 minutes of me fucking around with a model, but sometimes this is what making comics is. I mean, they could watch me draw produce um, on my That's stream. So um, I also like that you just yes. dismissed my contributions. <laughs> That's because your contribution is meaningful. I'm talking shit. Why would I talk shit about a meaningful contribution? That doesn't make sense. You said, never mind. So you think that people only tuned in for your bullshit, but not for Amanda's beautiful Kinsinger dress <laughs> Yeah, for his circumcision, I know. Stop Ooh. talking about my character's circumcision. It's upsetting. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh. Um... I watched this YouTuber read with Cindy. Um who is very funny because she sasses, like, kind of trashy romance novels a lot. Um, and she read her first Omegaverse um, book um, and had a lot of questions. Um, As you and, do. But the Omegaverse question that she <laughs> read was about a guy, and it was a heterosexual couple, so all the comments are like, what is even the point of heterosexual Omegaverse? Like, um, just people being like, that's pointless. It, 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 there's no fun there. You re read queer Omegaverse if you're going to read it. Um, now don't yuck everybody. Everybody's yum here. People are into it. It wasn't them yucking people's yum. It was more them being like, there's no point to this. Um, the point of Omegaverse is apparently primarily Mpreg. Um, so I'll admit, I am not no Omega I am not no Megaverse expert. All this I is know... I, this is according to the comments. The people uh -huh. are like, the point of Omegaverse is to give me Mpreg shit. So what yeah. what is the point of this straight Omegaverse shit? Um, Literally, you want to know what I know about Omegaverse? What I know about Omegaverse is that apparently the person who made it up is litigious as fuck. That's all I know. No, no. Nope. They didn't make it up. They did not what? make it up. That's the thing. 
is it's extremely Dino. old. That's why that's why they lost the lawsuit. Um, oh, it's because okay. they didn't make it up. Um, fan fiction okay. made it up. Um, it's it's an extremely old thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know uh, that. that. That's that. Well, that was covered in the Lindsay Ellis video. That I assume is how you know that that lady is litigious. Um, but the Lindsay Ellis video is like fucking like three years old at this point, isn't it? It's been yeah, a while since you it's still it. what? What, the, that, what is that? That the information hasn't changed. That person still did Jeez, not invent. But I am the owner of an organic brain that lets go of information from time to time. What Spike is saying that her memory is bad. Oh, okay. I thought that was commentary. I was on the video is fallible because it's old. No, no. Okay. It's, my brain is the thing that's fallible. Okay. And yet the information you hold on. No, I don't actually. You know what? Disagree. Your brain <laughs> holds on to a great many things. It's just a matter of what you prioritize. It just happened to not be that information. And, and clearly, yeah, clearly the, the, the lore of the Omegaverse is not uh, um, Spike's priority. Um, the deep I am cuts. And God made me. The deep cuts I will get from Spike out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so Spike, mm -hmm. Omegaverse started in supernatural. My phone fanfic. keeps going to sleep. Oh god. There we go. Because they wanted some of those supernatural boys to get pregnant. Here, okay. Here's the thing. It didn't even like it got okay. It got kind of codif uh, codified, codified, co codified around that uh -huh. era, mm -hmm. but it pre-existed it if you read any Dojins. Like, know. the, the I, concepts I, were in lots of, like, Japanese doujin comics. So, yeah, like, the concepts... But they got uh, codified it later. were floating around, yeah, and then they got codified later. Um, if you read any yaoi doujins, you were exposed to this shit as, as, like, early on as the 80s. Need to fix the lighting. Um, like I, I will fight everybody who acts like it's it, it's new or that also, it came from fan fiction. It did not. I mean, Dojins are fan comics. So, yeah, but you know um, what? I'm talking very specifically here. A fan fiction, bless them. Fan fiction creators take a lot of credit for shit that Dojin makers have been doing for a very long time, for better or for worse. Whether those contributions Net were Fisher, good or bad. Net Fisher, here is the thing uh, about werewolves versus Omegaverse. Um, and I actually think Omegaverse got rid of a lot of the tropes I thought were shitty about werewolf fiction <laughs> and put them in Omegaverse world. Um, because when I was talking to a friend... Um, uh, about Omegaverse, I was like, it's kind of like having a toxic masculinity fetish. Um, yeah. yeah. So a lot of the stuff that is in Omegaverse, like the uh, domination, the like controlling behavior, um, all that stuff is ve also very popular in werewolves because of the whole alpha thing. Um, but as Omegaverse rose in popularity, more and more people who were going to werewolf stuff for that left to go to Omegaverse because they wanted that, but not the quote unquote furry stuff. Um, so werewolf fiction, in my opinion, has gotten better since Omegaverse came into existence. Um... Because now people that are writing werewolves are actually interested in werewolves rather than toxic masculinity. Um, this is going to be impossible. Oh, to Not impossible. But. It, from any angle it, is, it is unsurprising that I have uh, these strong opinions. I am going to save this. And, I and all I'm saying is myself. porn walked so fan fiction art writers could walk <laughs> or could run. Oh, that does look a little goofy, but not as goofy as I feared. 
Okay. No. Um. Is it this one? No. No. This one, that. Let's try that. Okay. God, I'm trying um, to modify pencil this. Ears. Pencil ears, yeah. Um, I, I've i seen more uh, Lady Werewolf stuff lately. I've also seen more... Um, yeah, Alpha Wolves is bad science. Um, so now you get um, more people into werewolves who acknowledge that that's bad science. Um, I could complain about bad werewolf books for a while. Um you often do. Oh, I, 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 this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, you, you've not heard the deep lore of the things that annoy me about bad werewolf books. Um, <laughs> the deep lore. Um, there was a werewolf book. Um, I read the first of. Uh, that was um. The main character is a were coyote, and her main job <clears throat> is to be a messenger between werewolf pack, werewolf packs, because the werewolves couldn't tolerate other werewolves on their territory, and then also all werewolves are innately homophobic, because dude werewolves like instinctually just can't tolerate a dude werewolf that wants to fuck them. And I, I was just like, this is so much bullshit nonsense that I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Um, and that is one of the most popular werewolf stories, uh, book series that. that I think it's on like volume 20. Oh, um, and then, um, there was another one where um, werewolves cannot say no to their alpha. Oh, boy. So the main character is repeatedly getting raped by the alpha in her werewolf pack. Of course. Um, and then she... God, Ella Enchantment um, is different than what I remember. <laughs> Ella, uh, and then... Um, the uh, And then she escapes, and she starts her own werewolf pack... And then her love interest is a guy that's in her werewolf pack, but they don't talk about how he can't say no to her. So I'm just sitting there like, so we're not going to talk about the fact that she's basically put her love interest in the same situation she was in in book one. Like, we're, we're just going to, like, not talk about that at all. Um, all right. Um... Then um, another really bad one was um, uh, you get bit by a werewolf and not everyone is strong enough to survive it. So there's no lady werewolves because la lady werewolves are just, women are just too delicate to survive getting bitten by a werewolf. Except for the main character who, um, is, special. who is special. So she is not like other girls textually. Um, and all the werewolves want to fuck her because she's the only girl werewolf. Double X um, chromosomes have an anatomy that enables them to literally push on another human out of the most sensitive part. Yeah, of their yeah, body. no. So this is but why I'm like, this is hardcore bullshit. Um, yeah, they're so, they're too delicate to be a werewolf, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so she's textually not like other girls, and that's. Why I love special. that because you can, uh, there are so many power fantasies and d other kind of fantasies where it's like you're putting people in a position where like, like yes, it's contrived, but like it does get us quickly to the part where, ooh, we have to share the sleeping bag or, ooh, we have to do this, you know? It gets yeah, you there yeah. faster. However, this person's fantasy is to contrive a world where she is the last woman on earth because that's the only way people will have sex with her. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like, that's so sad. No, that's not empowering. That's, like, so sad. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the werewolf rapist genre. And there are, yeah, Net Fisher's the same. It's and just so, like, so, so, oh. Net Fisher, that's why I say that werewolf books have gotten better since Omegaverse started. Because all the people that are really into that went to yes. Omegaverse. Um,. Because Omegaverse is also full of I can't say no because of the pheromones or whatever. Like <laughs> the pheromones. Um, 
And, like, again, there's some way where I get it. Because, like, yeah, you know, people do have, like, want the fantasies where, like, you know, they don't have, they can just, things happen to them and they don't have to be, like. No agency, yeah. On purpose. Yeah. But, on like, purpose, again, yeah. I can't. Even even conceding that, I just can't get over if I contrive a situation where I am literally the only viable woman, that would be great. It's like, you have nothing? You have nothing else going for you? This so, actually makes me think I'm of so a thing sad I, for you. I briefly mentioned on uh, Blue Sky recently, which is a truly terrible movie you can all go watch for free called The, Mis- the, the Misty Green Sky. And it has that element to it. Where it's about, imagine an alien planet full of people who are descended from Earthlings, but have never been to Earth and will never see Earth. They're descended from Earthling colonists. But a super virus killed off all the adults. So basically, for a while, the planet was full of 12-year-olds. They're all like 16, 17 now. So it's a planet full of teenagers. And, And for whatever reason... Being on this planet makes the birth rate of women to man like seven to three. So it's just something about this planet that makes for every seven girls born, only three boys were born. Mm-hmm. And as a result, you know, the men, they, they have no choice to, they, they have no choice. They have to take multiple wives. They have to. And the women have to compete incredibly, you know, energetically. For the attention of the men, because you know there is no other option. They, 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 if they, well, I can them, think they, of like fifty have... other options. I know, right? This is one of those things where it's like, oh, this is another one of those, you know, lesbians and bisexuals don't exist worlds. Okay, well, well, not even that, but like one dude impregnate many people. Very yeah, easy. This, yeah, but th- this isn't about that. This is about partnership. So yeah. it's like, oh, you know, they, the the women want partnership so badly. That of course, you know, the man has. It'd be cruel for him to not have three wives. So it's it's a, it's it's government mandated waifus, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but dudes, like seventeen. Um, Yuck. Yeah. Uh, and that is not the creepiest thing about. Oh, I I don't doubt that. Not even a little um, do I doubt that. That's not the some, creepiest someone thing. Someone is saying. Um, it, that Omega Verse is the filter for werewolf fiction garbage, and that garbage still exists in werewolf fiction. It's just less common now because they're all moving to Omega Verse. Um, and this is also specifically in fan fiction. Um, traditional publishing still has um, uh, a lot of those werewolfy tropes, like because, like I said, the one where werewolves are all innately homophobic. Um, is still going. Um, <laughs> I hate it. I hate that one. Like it's conceptually offensively stupid. Yeah, um, I, I'm a much bigger fan of Sean and McGuire wrote a werewolf book that's about how werewolves can't go to Australia because they're an invasive species, um, and that's way more fun. Um, I mean, they're just trying to protect all the kangaroos. Valid. No, they might eat the kangaroos. Um, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. No, no, yeah, yeah, they're, they, yeah, uh, no werewolves because they're an invasive species. Uh, get out. Um, oh, mom's sending me more photos of my little sister. Yeah, Amanda got a new little sister. She's a very small white Persian cat. Persian cats. You know what? No, I just got done talking about yucking other people's yums. This cat's <laughs> eyes don't stare in the same direction. I love her very much. That makes me think of Amanda. She's a little freak. Uh, I love her. Amanda, yeah. that makes me think of us watching um, uh, the um, uh, that one anime where all the girls were really wall-eyed and looked like Persian cats. Uh, pencil ears, yeah, uh, werewolfism is like rabies, um, is how it's compared, uh, in the, the book, so it's like, uh, it can actually spread to all mammals, um, so it's like, um, we need to 
make sure that it doesn't spread through Australia real quick. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, Amanda, I love this dress and all, all its frills. Um, oh, thank you. It's very good. I would never wear it, but it's a good design. Oh, me neither. He's willing to put up with a lot more than I ever would. I know that feeling, right? Um, one thing I like about Baldur's Gate is you can put all clothes on everyone. Um, so you can put that fuckboy in the sluttiest dress. Um, there, I sent in the, uh, in the Discord, I sent pictures of the creature. Um, why did it send yeah, both versions? Whatever. whatever. Okay, I, I, first panel finally. I tried to crop my stepdad out, but it didn't work. Minutes. So anyway, there you go. That cat's eyes don't look in the same direction. No, they don't. Do I have to look at this fucking thing? You no, know, you don't. Oh, well, let me take a look. You don't have to, but we're. Oh, uh, uh, here we go. Lack fucking of eyes. Sock it to me. Let me see this thing. Jesus. <laughs> look at that, and you tell me there's a god. Your little baby, ugly little baby. Oh. <laughs> I bet it's one of those things where it's like in like five, ten years, it won't even be able to groom itself, so it'll have to like go to the special groomer. Uh, so it can no, save the mats out of its ass. Not real. Here's the thing: they do have that issue, but like as long as you, you can literally brush them, and it will prevent that. Mm. My mom's pr again. I'm not a fan of the whole Persian cat thing, but my mom has them. There's no going back from that now. And <laughs> none of them have fur issues. You just brush them. Now, that means you can never have them, like, as outside cats. Uh, cat picks for the chat. Uh, I don't know how to... Oh, uh, hmm. give me a second. Give me a second. Yeah. If I do this temporarily, you will not be able to see Spike's drawing. So give me a moment. That means Spike's stuff's about to disappear. there <laughs> also spike i looked up pete complete um he's playing on honor mode which okay. is the hardest mode so now let me bring yep, spike that's back pete complete shit. but now here is baby harassing oh wait there we go here's there's, the baby there's uh i think there's permadeath in honor mode um and then here there she look gaze upon her I'm zooming and gaze upon her. <laughs> baby. A oh, poor ugly little baby who I love very much. I want to kiss her very badly. I just want to smooch her so much. She seems so sweet. Though she tears out, apparently she is tormenting the other cats, which is great, frankly. That's that's the whole. That's why you. God, that cat. That's why you get a kitten to torment the adult cats. Fuck. She was made in a lab to be beautiful. <laughs> this really makes me think of like every once in a while you'll see kind of like various versions of that same goddamn meme where it's like a wolf is walking towards a we campfire stand. surrounded by homo sapien cave people and like the other wolves are like moon moon no and the wolf goes oh come on they're friendly they give us food what's the worst that could happen and then the next image is three thousand years later and it's like a pug wearing a clown outfit <laughs> that that's the cat version of that meme <laughs> um He's still going to look pissy. Even though he's the worst very pretty, he's going to continue to look pissy. That. You could be a white Persian cat. That's the worst thing. <laughs> or you get those big, nasty tear stains and like, ugh. Man, I'm just thinking about how many bad werewolf books there are now. Um... Abomination of science. Exactly. That's weird. <sighs> Just, I don't even and, know where I got the line, but there is a line I remember seeing in some piece of media somewhere where someone just goes, you look at that and you tell me there's a God. <laughs> I think I've seen that in multiple like, things. Yeah. yeah. I see, it's like, 
that's what I think of when I see like Persian cats and shit. And there is this um, there's this lady who breeds. I don't even know what the they are. I think they're Oriental short hairs. They're some fucked up looking cats. And one of them can't even meow. And its name is Teddy, and it just honks. oh no, that's just a Siamese trait that they've kind of inherited. Siamese it's are like, it's like. We all know, like, cats, there's a, there is a beautiful symphony of cat meows that go from little mews to, like, rang and to smoker. Like, I get it. There's all these different cat meows in the world, but this thing does not make a noise like a cat. Oh, yes, it does. If you're familiar it's with Siamese, horrible. it totally does. It's horrible. It's a terrible animal. Spike, that is actually a pretty normal cat noise. That's <laughs> not that weird. It's just no, I know exactly the cat. They honk. They it's honk. Awful. But again, my cat makes that noise sometimes. It's just a noise they can make. That's also, the thing about cats I... is cats don't have standard meows. Like some mm -hmm. breeds have certain like ranges they go through. But like, like Siamese are known to be the smoker cats. But um, any cat can have that meow because they don't have standardized meows because they only learn to meow to talk to us. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was talking to a friend who was like, I was like, yeah, you know, they learn to meow like babies because that's what gets our attention. They're like, well, I don't ever respond to the baby noises. I'm like, well, wh what does your cat sound like? Like, like a yelling demon. Well, unfortunately, those are the sounds you respond to. So congratulations. You've trained your cat to yell like a demon instead of a baby. I love that video of the deaf guy where his cat learned to sign food. Or spe yeah, specifically, uh, it, it was like, also touch him to sign. Yeah, it, like, taps him to get his attention, and then it signs food. Um, it's Can like, really... doing this will get me food. Um, Can I be super shallow for, like, just a second? What? This is it. This is there's, your last chance today. This is, There's this blind guy, and he is, like, really cute. And that's the only reason I follow him. And maybe um, anyone here who is, like, active on TikTok. Are there, is, this is the only there. person you follow because they're cute? No, there are a couple, but like this one is especially shallow because his content is really, really shallow. He's just <laughs> so you're following like, him it... for the intended reason. And his whole bit is he just goes, I'm blind. This is how I open a can of beans. I'm blind. This is how I get ready for bed. I'm blind. This is how I feed my dog. Like that. That's that's how he does everything. And then he finishes everything by yelling, what love? Like he's Bob Marley or something. Um, and it's very formulaic, and if he were anybody else, if he were fucking 13% less, less attractive, I would have never subscribed. Um, Spike. Um, yeah. a guy who makes kind of shallow content, but I still Oops. follow slash watch, um, is, there's an archery guy, um, he went viral because he was like, this is how every D&D &D class fires an arrow. Um, and it was a very funny video, but he, he also makes other archery videos. And I was like, his most recent one I saw was like, Hey, I hurt my shoulder. So this is how you could fire a bow with one arm. Um, and you see it a lot in like comic books and stuff, um, or, uh, in, in action movies. And like, this is how viable it actually is. Um, and he's like, fire with your teeth. That's a great way to fuck up your teeth. Uh, don't do it. Um, yeah. fire with your leg would be a pain to aim, but, uh, it is probably better for you than firing with your teeth. Yeah. Uh, that guy is a hottie, the, um, air, air the archer guy. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm watching him for shallow reasons. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's also a, um, I've linked him a couple of times. Uh, he's this kid on TikTok. He dances a lot. And uh, he is this white guy who appears to be dancing in his parents' front yard. And his whole thing recently has been, he dresses up in multiple different outfits and then splices everything together as if he's a dance troupe, but he's like a one person dance troupe. And, uh, he is really funny. And I also follow him because, you know, he is, I'd say he's like, I'm not going to rate him as a number that's dehumanizing, but I'd say he's pretty cute. He's not like super cute, but he, you know, I, I probably follow him for shallow reasons. I like the dancing a lot, but you know, there's a lot of people who dance just as well. I don't follow. I have to admit to myself. 
I'm I'm in a position where I realize like I I I, I kind of can't relate because like I don't find strangers like there's a reason like um this might be a oh fuck I'm demisexual as shit but um. Like, I, tend, I, I find, like, fictional characters, I can go, like, oh, yeah, baby. It's extremely rare, if never, that I see, like, a real person and go, oh, they're hot. I'm into them. Like, if I don't already, like, like them, like, romantically, it's extremely hard for me to find a real person hot. No, this isn't me going, oh, man, I want to fucking bone down with them. I know. Sometimes I'm, it's, like, looking at, you know, attractive-looking dude. I'm just saying I, I'm into chicks. I just, I'm just saying I don't. I, I don't do the same with chicks. You know what I mean? I'm not. This isn't a judgment. It's more. It's just one of those. Amanda always always realizing things about herself. Aren't we all always? At least we should be. I I linked the archery dude um, in our our Discord. And I'm not so. even talking about horny stuff. I'm just talking about like attractive. Like people kind of mm-hmm. aren't even attractive if I'm not like invested mm-hmm. in them. Yeah. I understand the concept of eye candy now better in my 40s than I did when I was like 16 or 17 because, you know, there are just some people I'm like, oh, hello, young man. Follow. Yeah. Just kind of. Um, it's like I, I have no designs on these people. You know, it's just it's nice to be scrolling and there is a handsome face for them for me to look at. And it's actually kind of affected the way I I think of things. Like, I go on Reddit. It's a weakness. I apologize. But um, what I'm on Reddit every well, day. What's your point? Well, there it, there are Reddits where people will post things like, "So my fiance, I saw him on Instagram, and he has subscribed to like three different models. Should I call off the wedding?" And when I was, like, younger, I'd probably been like, fuck yeah, fuck that guy. That, that's, like, maximum disrespect. Fuck him. But now I'm just like, he's just looking. <laughs> he's just looking. Um, I'm not about to fucking leave my man because there, I found a cute dude on TikTok. Like, Jesus. There, uh, while I was looking up Baldur Gate, Baldur's Gate stuff, um, I found a guy who was like, so, Baldur Gate... Baldur's Gate saved me from a bad relationship. And the story he shared was, uh, I'm bisexual, and I like was having the entire crew in my Baldur's Gate game run around uh, naked, because I, I want to see. Um, and, um, and my girlfriend looked over at my computer screen and saw that the whole team was naked, and was like, I understand why the girls are naked, but why are the guys also naked? Um, and I was like, because I, I appreciate both, and I like looking at both, and look at that ass. Um, That's fun. That's a good and uh, and uh, then she seemed okay with it at the time, but then I overheard her on the, but then she called me the F-slur. Uh, oh. and, uh, he's like, so we're broken up now, and Good. Will's dick literally saved me from a bigot. Um, <laughs> dick. It's a little pixel dick. Yeah. It's not pixels, uh, <laughs> or... I mean, tech, what do you mean? I guess, yeah, I guess it's just a lot of pixels. I was saying you normal, pixel art, yeah. normal mapped dick. Yeah. Uh, oh, those yeah. bumps. Yeah. Yeah. Pencilier says, valid, sometimes I see men, I just want to step on them a little. Holy fuck, you and me, we are here. I've mentioned this before, I don't say it every stream, so I think the time has come to mention it again. Um, There are some guys, and some guys you absolutely get the sense for. No, 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 here's the thing though. It's hard to put into words, but you can sense that they're kind of down, you know? It's like you're just, like, sitting next to them in a room or at the party, and you think to yourself, if I pushed him off the couch right now, not only would he let me, he'd kind of like it. I hate this stream so And it's really difficult to, like, explain how you know, but whenever I have given in to that impulse, I have literally never been wrong. And it's not someone just being polite. No, he he dug it. I'm in hell. (laughs) There's this guy I used to work with at Pearl. 
I'd give him a little kick every time I walked by. He liked it. I hate this. Spike's a bully. Um, we, we all know this. I just have... Um, there's just certain vibes I'm uncomfortable with, and we've reached one. Yeah. This is Amanda. Spike likes to bully people. No, no, Spike no, no. This is an Amanda people, is a weirdo and, uh, thing. This is not a Spike doing anything wrong no. thing. This is no, an Amanda no, no. is a weirdo. I'm just saying, I'm just summing it up. Uh, Spike likes to bully people, and I like a fight. And um, uh, uh, Amanda likes to cuddle. Um, that is not true. It's more just... Okay. <laughs> that is not Here. true. No. Okay. Um... It's I'm more, just... when we talk about fictional people, I come comfortable. When we talk about real people, instant discomfort. Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is, a me, again, this is a me being a weird thing. Okay. When we talk, that's why I like, I'll joke about like giant women and monsters and stuff. But if we start talking about real people, suddenly I'm like, I don't know. I get weird. I don't know. This is an Amanda is weird. Amanda mm -hmm. needs therapy probably. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all though? Or again, this could just be the whole... I don't know, Mike. I'm weird. For someone who made porn for ten years and still dabbles, you'd uh, think I'd be more comfortable with certain things, but I'm not. Well, everybody's got their different little levels, you know. Like I'm down to talk about all the kinks until we're talking about real people, and suddenly, no, I don't want to. <laughs> My 18-pound cat has decided I must not breathe anymore. Well, well no, no, no breathing allowed. They know best. I mean, I wouldn't really question them on this one. They know you better than anyone, right? Oxygen is optional. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to talk. You know, I think I think that's actually why I do actually like porn, like uh, porn comics and stuff so much, because like I can't wrap my head around relationships and attraction unless the people like like for, for me personally, unless I'm already in a relationship with someone. But when it's a fictional comic, you get to bypass straight to that. Like I, I've established these people already like each other. You know what See, I mean? My favorite, so I can my live favorite. vicariously through them because they do already like each other. See, my favorite part is seeing them getting to like each other. Because my biggest complaint when it comes to romance... Oh, and, yeah, no, I uh, like that part, sex, too. Yeah, sex and fiction is... I I don't understand why these people like each other. <laughs> I think in Hollywood they just call it, they don't have chemistry. But, you know, I there's sometimes I mean, where... That you, is the, that is the yeah. thing. They don't have chemistry. Um, yeah. But the thing is... When it's two fictional people, you can't really talk about chemistry. And, you know, like, I read a lot of Well, no, no, no. I, I think, like, as far as when the actors are real people and it's mm -hmm. fictional, it's the actors not having chemistry is hurting the fictional characters. Um, and I think that even though they're fictional characters, it's the actors are bringing a thing to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is why, um, I think, like, certain fictional, it's why sometimes I think live action stuff gets away with, um, slightly worse writing with romance is because they're relying on actor chemistry and that can mm -hmm. backfire spectacularly or it can, um... I want uh, this shoulder puff to look like a rose, but I don't know how to make it. I'm just going to Google. Because cause there's stuff where it's like the delivery of a line can sell a thing. Um, so it's what the actor is bringing to the fictional character is elevating the material or um, they're understanding the material better. Um, like... I could under like I, I was talking once with a friend of the show, Kevin Wilson, about how what's a thing that no matter how you say it, it sounds creepy. And everything that we were coming up with, mm -hmm. um, we could find a very specific one percent chance situation where it doesn't sound creepy. Um, like, the thing I contributed was, your fingernails look delicious. Um, 
And I was like, that's a compliment that I feel like gross 90% of the time. Um, sure. Where, as, but there are, there is someone who could probably pull that off. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, Penciliers is saying the tension and the chemistry are definitely things that like um, uh, uh, could work. Um, the actors would be end up bringing it. Like, um, I personally don't think the writing of Mulder and Scully, because uh, Net, Net Fisher is bringing up X Files, is all that will they, won't they, or coupley. But it's just the chemistry that those two actors have together. Um, oh my definitely, God, like just... a lot of people read that as romantic, and I think a lot of when a couple doesn't work on a live action TV show, usually it's because the actors don't have chemistry together. But when I like chemistry, it's like it you can't really talk about fictional people on a comic page who are not actors. They are literal. Yeah. Blind. I mean, yeah. there is a thing that it's like, it's just bad writing at that point. It's yeah. But chemistry. bad writing results well, in bad chemistry. Like it's not like, well, no, so, so here's the thing is it might just be, it might be bad writing. It might be the art is not conveying the acting as well, because um, if I type a line in my head, I might think of the character delivering it a specific way. But if mm -hmm. I don't properly draw the character or letter it properly, you wouldn't read it the way that the character is saying it. Um, and um, so, like, I think, like, that's part of it is the absence of audio is leaving room for interpretation. And while the writer might be thinking one thing, you might be thinking a different thing. Um, and that, so it's not, I wouldn't necessarily say that is bad writing, but it is like a failure on to in clarity. Um, mm -hmm. But what I was like, the whole point I was bringing this around to yeah. is there is a thing. It's like, I talk about it a lot because I fucking hate it so much. There's a thing where I think a lot of writers, especially in manga, which is why I think, quite frankly, the vast majority of romance manga sucks. There's a thing that um, a lot of manga writers lean on and a lot of American and slash Western writers also lean on when they're like strictly amateur hour. And that's Love at First Sight, which I think is lazy bullshit. And mm -hmm. I, I, I've always hated Love at First Sight. It always takes me right out of things. You can absolutely be infatuated with someone you can get that bolt out of the blue for sure, absolutely. But what you are feeling is not love, I would argue, <laughs> when that happens. Like, when you see someone, um, you're just like, oh. You know, that's not, what? holy fuck, let's buy a minivan. That's not what you're feeling in that moment. Um, I just think that's... Uh, unless you're lesbians. Yeah. That's, I think, personally, that's just a tool people use when they're not interested in trying to figure out how to make a character lovable. I think also um, usually queer couples are written better in media right now because people need to justify the queer couple being a couple. So they put more effort into the queer couple. Um, and the lazy thing in romance that I see a lot is when the romance is a subplot and it's just assumed these characters are going to get together um, because this is the main guy and this is the main girl. Um, and because of that, people don't, the writers don't put the effort into establishing the relationship. Mm -hmm. So um, the when someone's writing a queer couple, it is not taken for granted that they will get together. So the writer is doing more work and it's resulting in actually a better written romance. Um, and um, I um, also what was interesting is recently, um, so the YouTuber I like, Broey Deschanel, recently did a video about rom-coms um, and points out how 
Um, the reason why a lot of them work, or at least the classics work, um, is not stuff that you would expect. Um, and that is that usually um, the main character is older and has just like gone through a bad breakup. So they're a bit more jaded about love is apparently it's a thing that like they I didn't realize it until they pointed it out in this video. Um and so that also puts them against the love at first sight thing that you're talking about Spike. So like mm -hmm. their work has to be done to get them to believe in love again. Um and that's partly why the classic ones have like sort of stood the test of time. Um, I know what I should do. He looks so nice in his dress. I need to draw someone who would, would contrast um, very well. And that would be Parima in a quinceanera dress would be a very good contrast. <laughs> uh, what's more frozen food? Uh, uh, vegetable blend with like green Santa green Fe green vegetable color. blend. That's what's in my fridge right now. Yeah. Okay. What vegetables are in the Santa Fe? Vegetable Black beans, blend? corn, diced bell peppers, onion, diced onions. Pretty yeah. sure. Okay. Diced bell peppers. Uh, yeah, hungry man dinner. Yeah, hungry man yeah. dinners would be a good one. Banquet pot frozen pies. Are we all just burritos. opening our fridges and leaning like, uh? Frozen burritos. Usually I have uh, frozen, I have frozen garlic bread, but I don't have any right now. By the way, I have potentially good news. Mm -hmm. I got a jury summons. And I was bummed the whole day because I just don't fucking feel like dealing with this right now. I've got a lot going on, obviously. But I read it and I am a standby juror. I am not a standard get your ass down here now and ruin this person's life juror. So I, I am going to call a number the day before and it will tell me mm -hmm. through automated mail if I actually need to go down there or not. And there are chances I do not have to. Great. Do, oh, did okay. I, I, the last time I went to jury duty, I, I, I definitely told you about like why um, I didn't end up having to do it. Did you mention jury nullification? No. Oh. Um, I did, I was very clearly not an ideal candidate because they did the, has this happened to you? Has that happened to you? Yeah. And I raised, I was the only one who raised my hand for a specific one. And I, they cl clearly wrote that down. I'm like, yeah, there's no way they're taking me. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. One might've wanted me. The other probably wouldn't. But long story short, um, uh, basically it turns out that it was a f what was it? it was something about like oh yeah I remember so the person who was was uh, charging the other person with assault um, apparently like they spit on themselves mm -hmm. and were mad about it <laughs> and this okay. detail was somehow not communicated until this point it was a whole look and then like wait. So an assault just literally, no, no, you don't understand. This isn't a, we're debating if a, an assault happened or not. An assault just didn't fucking happen. And they're like, yeah, no. And then the guy who was uh, the, 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 uh, on the prosecutor side, whatever you call them, plaintiff? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, was just like, oh, well, yeah, no, well, we didn't actually have a conflict. But like, he has it coming. And he oh, just said that oh. out loud. And I was like, Yay, I get to get my burrito money and go home. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, good. This is nothing. So they gave me basically what I call burrito money, and I went and bought a burrito and went home. Yeah, they give you like 40 bucks, right? No. Oh. It's based on how many hours you're actually there. Oh, okay. And they could only pay us for like like the hour we were there, so I just got burrito money. That's good. Now, now I'm excited to drop Parima in what would be her finery, which is not going to be as fancy. Because she is an eternal dork. 
no matter how hard she tries. Burritos of democracy. I am literally doing the text for this page right now, and I know what needs to be said, but I'm just, like, doing the, the details where basically Bettany is ducking in and he's going, come on, follow me, don't run ahead. And Ta is going, okay. And then Ta, looking back while he enters the cave, goes, does Eki really believe all that stuff? And then Bettany goes, maybe, I don't know, don't think about it. And he goes, okay. And then yeah, I know for sometimes goes, for a... Pan in fact, most of the time for uh, my pages, I don't actually know what characters are going to say till I'm actually typing the dialogue. So I just write, character is mad. Make her say yeah. something mad. And then this is the, the bottom panel here is the big reveal. And that is the one where Eki, not sorry, Ta, hooks uh, a finger into their little pouch and pulls it out and goes, well, okay, but don't worry about it because if the great she throws you out of her pocket... We can make sure you just grow, you can have your third birth in mine. And <laughs> I'll turn back into a girl and you can have my, uh, your third birth in mine, is what they say. And Bettany replies with, don't be weird. So that is going to be the big. The big That's thing. rich. That is extremely rich coming from him. <laughs> He's not weird. He's a, he is very weird. Do not. No. No, 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 no. Do not. You're just saying that because he killed somebody. Yeah! That's not weird. I am, in fact, saying that because he killed somebody. I would say that's a very normal reaction to someone nearly shooting you in the skull. No. Yes, it is. No, that's the context. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying. I saw what you drew, and you know what you drew. You are <laughs> being very facetious and silly when you say, oh, no, he's not weird. He's not weird. He is he's not, weird. He isn't weird. He's, he's a complete. He's an absolute weirdo. <laughs> he's the most normal among them. Actually. That and still weird. <laughs> he's, he is he's weird, weird by design, and you know it. I feel like you're yanking my leg. Yeah, trans mask goblin man. We stand. Yeah, uh, I I mentioned for folks who have are new to the stream who have not seen it before. Uh, Ta here is basically a gender that does not exist among humans, but exists among whatever these people call themselves. I have not decided what they think they are. I think they're just going to call themselves people. I really, th and I'm just going to like <laughs> actively avoid saying the word human for 1000 pages. I think I'm just going to do that. But um, yeah. Yeah, that's a funny they writing thing with Purima that I'm, I dance yeah. around a lot. But um, yeah, basically the gender that, Ta has the closest that humans have is uh, there's something called an Albanian sworn virgin. And what that is in Albanian culture is so imagine you're in a household and there's a mom and there's like three daughters and the, the husband slash dad is gone or dead or has absconded or whatever. And there is like no person to take on the male role in the household and you live in a very gender divided society um a older girl in the in the, in the household can basically socially become a man and and that's what a sworn virgin is uh this is not the same though what ta is is not the same though because there is no household necessity and ta is trans mask is a good word because ta does not identify as male or female but the role that they have in this society is basically um it's a very gender divided society too like the women live in one house and the men live in another house and they like meet up a few times a year they don't actually like live in one another's company but um the gender that ta is they're considered pretty valuable just socially because they're allowed in both they go to the men's tent they go to the women's tent they can carry notes back and forth in between official meeting times that kind of thing and that's actually going to come into play later on because like a lot of people who are gender non-conforming, uh, Ta is pretty rare. You know, you can't really have one in your family. It's not very often you have one in your family. I'm going way too hard on these ruffles. 
and so Ta is a is a valuable commodity, and probably part of the reason Betney is so weirdly protective is Betney understands that. Like there, and uh, keep in mind this is a this is a slaver society. What's functionally slavery does exist in this society, so uh, he he is maybe a little more protective of Ta than he might otherwise be, if that were not the case. It's kind of like how in Victorian London, having a little African serving boy was not necessary, but it was like a flex. That, that's kind of what Ta would be. And Bettany is basically dedicating a lot I of... I love how you say these things like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, it, it, it was a thing. It was a thing. No, I believe you. 100% believe oh. you. Yeah. It's like the, the sort of... The transatlantic slave trade kind of has... There's a very American style of slavery. And then there is a more English style of slavery. And... It's, they're both bad, but English slavery was more of a flex, whereas American slavery was just fucking capitalism. I mean, flexing is pretty you capitalistic. Know. Yeah, but you know what I mean, yeah. right? It's yeah. kind of like having a Rolls Royce. It was also you know? uh, the, the, the um, American chattel slavery was more brutal. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. it is. Yes. Owning humans is satisfying. Both yeah. are both are both are capitalism, but one is more brutal. Yes, um, one hundo. And I should note that it's like that's not sort of the state of slavery. We're going to meet some slaves. Don't worry. Uh, that's not. Yay! Sort of the state of people in general. Wait, where's uh, my soundboard? Wait, wait, where's my? They sound? have a. There's a herder. They live in a herder society. They're 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 a lot like um, sort of golden horde Cossack kind of people, and so they. Oh, here we go. I found it. Meat. They drink a lot of milk. Oh. <laughs> they don't farm I sound. but the thing is when your herd gets large enough it's pretty tough to take care of all by yourself so you know wouldn't it be cool if there was free labor hint hint and that that's kind of what happens basically the herd boys and are, are your are your free labor and uh if you have more aren't you special and aren't you powerful and aren't you strong I got. Um, I got to get the yippee in the soundboard. I need the yes, yippee. Anyway, this is. Spike, have you is, watched the Venlin Saga anime? Yeah, I have not. I plan to, but yeah, this is where their uh, this is where their little pouches. They are marsupials, and that is where the pouch is it's on their chest. And the way I see it, people are like, "That's weird," but important note. So I've mentioned before, they're descended from marsupial lion type things. They are not descended from wombats. And a lot of people would probably be like, shouldn't the pouch be facing backwards? No, because wombat pouches face backwards because wombats are digging animals, so they don't fill their pouches with dirt. That's why wombat pouches face backwards. And quite frankly, human breasts are front butts. And if our butts can move to our chests, I imagine a pouch can migrate up a body until it's on the chest area. It can't be between their legs, because imagine if, like, these are your little legs. These are your little legs here, and these are your little feet. Like, you can't carry a baby down here. Like, how are you going to walk? You, you'd have to waddle everywhere. Here's the baby. Here's a little... Yeah. Like, no, that's not going to work. Like a kangaroo? No, that's not going to work, dude. No, you got places to be. You can't have a kid between your legs. So it's yeah, kangaroos got beefier legs for a reason. Um... You can't just... So the kid doesn't. Do they also them. steal brides, pencil ear spoilers. Spoilers. What um, you Spike, you should read um, Finland Saga or watch the anime. Yeah, I plan on it. I'm just, I'll get around to it. You know me; it'll take me a while, but I'll get there. Yeah. I I like the manga better because you know the art's so mm -hmm. pretty. Yeah. Um. Oh God! I have to draw these ruffles coming from the other direction. I don't want to. <laughs> I made mistakes on this day. No, these are choices. Mean, yes. Beautiful things. <sighs> like parties to show off that you have a pineapple. Exactly, Net Fisher. Ha is a pineapple. Imagine, if you will, the the two. It's like there's a lot. I have put. I have 
thought so fucking much about all this. Like, one of the fundamental things about their society is just, they are a, they're a herding society, and they don't, like, own land, but they do have territories, right? And basically, all a lot of their issues stem oh, from God, population God, why have I chosen to do this? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Population control is important, and fortunately, they're very good at population control. Because basically, if you get pregnant, you like, I've mentioned this before, but they, they kind of spend, the women in their society spend their like entire adulthood pregnant, because that's kind of how kangaroos do. And I'm stealing from kangaroos. And basically, if you are pregnant and you don't want it, it like Just falls out of you. Shut that baby. Like 70 or 80 days, and it's it's like the size of a gummy bear. So you Eject the just, bean. You eat it. Yeah. <laughs> you eat it, and like no just, one really has to know. Throw that bean out. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like considered like women's business, and the women are kind of in charge of like population, and they have a lot, like there's a thing that the Catholic Church actually used to have, which is a concept of the moment it stops being a part of the mother and starts being its own thing because it has a soul. And it was like the moment the fetus inside the mother gets its soul was referred to as the quickening. And these people have complicated rules about, okay, you can yeet the baby up until this point, but you cannot yeet it afterwards. <laughs> no, you cannot yeet it afterwards. And I've decided that point is basically... When the jelly bean develops far enough that you know if it's XY or XX. And a choice is made, because this is a thing that gets glossed over a lot in modern society, that choices were made uh, when the baby's sex became known. Because sometimes you couldn't have another guy in the group, and sometimes you couldn't have another girl in the group. And the original birth control was fucking infanticide. That was the original birth control. And yeah, I gotta was, throw that baby in a pit. Yeah, well, the thing is, a lot of... I mean, this is... You could write a fucking master's... You can write, write your PhD thesis on this. Uh, there were a lot of sort of practices. And we know about the most sort of... Spectacular. Uh, I'm having a great time. Spike? Mm -hmm. Spike? Let's yeah. not talk about dead babies. Please. Time is kind of interesting. I know but, you yeah. do, but you know, know you know Amanda, Amanda got her limits. It makes Amanda sad. Please. Okay, I will stop. I will Please. stop. Please. Thank I you. I will stop. But the thing is, when you have a limited amount of grazing you, land, you, you, you have a limited you amount. <laughs> I'm talking about grazing land. When you have a limited no, no, we've moved on to grazing rights. It's fine. You have to have a limited amount of... Um, I don't want to call them cattle. Uh, livestock. Let's go with livestock. I don't even know what they're fucking called, by the way. Uh, you have a limited amount of livestock. And basically, um, their whole world is actually incredibly small. And part of the reason they are not being harassed by the outside world is they're kind of not worth the trouble. Um, it's kind of like the people on North Sentinelese Island and every other country where there is no oil that is just sort of like off there doing its own thing. No one really cares about them. They think they fucking run the earth. Like, like here, you know, Eki is talking about their cosmology where they talk about they are literally, their apocalypse is they kill everyone who is not them. That's their apocalypse. And they, uh, they, they kind of have no concept about how much bigger the outside world is because they've been very careful about population control. And, and they have their own little stupid, you know, bill from three-tenths over made a face-at-me squabbles that kind of take up their entire lives. Humans have uh, been meant... So, Spike, mm -hmm. so there are regular humans in this world. Not everyone's a marsupial no. person. No, there are, there are no humans in this world. You are looking at the humans in this world. There are no people. Uh, they are just, the only humanoids in this world are these Keebler elf dudes. So they're all, all even the quote-unquote more civilized people are marsupials. Exactly. Okay. They are all like this. And part of the fun is going to be, nothing is like revolutionary. Uh, so they're all the same like species, they're just different cultures. Yes, exactly. Okay. 
And and Betney, as I've mentioned previously, Betney looks like the way he does. It's part of a reflection of how small their society actually is. Uh, he is inbred. <laughs> and that's that's why he has this pattern. He doesn't know that. He actually has to be informed down the line that he looks the way he does and he's the size he is, which is slightly larger than normal because he is inbred. He has kind of like the mildest form of this thing that happens when you keep it in the family a little too much. But that's what happens. Island when, genetics. Yeah, he has island genetics, and he doesn't know that, and he gets told that, and you know that's that's kind of a heavy thing to drop on someone. <laughs> because um, when I say inbred, we're we're talking like, what are those fam? What's that family in Europe's name? Uh, Habsburg. Yeah, Habsburg kind of level. So. Also, we're gonna get some insight into what happened, like why these three idiots live under a tree in this chapter so i'm excited for that i'm excited for explaining why idiots live in a tree why they are keebler elves <laughs> she's talking about culture thank you I, uh... I know you were talking about culture you... i'm a wiener everyone knows that <laughs> yeah but yeah i'm excited i'm excited to to sort of like get this story where it's going i'm very excited Okay, you know what? I think I've done enough. I think I'm allowed to start in game. I'll probably be really upset with myself down the line, but this is not nearly enough. But it's screw enough it, I'm not know. doing all this. Screw it, screw it, screw it. That's the spirit! This, is a, this was supposed to be a doodle. I was going to be doing lots of... Yeah, you know what? Spot blacks, yeah. spot blacks. No one's paying you for this, so if it's not fun, what's the point? And also, I just kind of immediately shift gears. I officially, like, like I want to be done with this so I can drop Porima in her fucking dress, which will be very silly. Yeah. My whims right. have shifted. You must listen to them. Yeah. Follow your heart. You deserve this, queen. Amanda? Yeah? I just want you to know how very much I care for you. Oh, uh, why? What are you about to do? I had a thought, and guess what? I kept it to myself. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't say anything. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't say a fucking thing. It would have been very... <laughs> you're, just, you're, you're still gonna dance around it, though. Hey. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I was Spike very thoughtful. It was extremely okay. cool. <laughs> so Spike. Yeah. <laughs> Spike, I'm gonna change the topic to Rimworld. Um, Amanda, I'm not gonna. Don't worry, Amanda. I'm not gonna traumatize you. But just, just, just know. I'm thinking about it a lot. No, I stopped. I, I stopped. know. It's, a, it's like, see. Also, you should note what it's like being married to me, because. Because Matt will be, like, doing something, and I'll come over, and I'll give him a kiss. And I'll say something to the effect of, just so you know, I really wanted to kick you right now, but I didn't. Because I love you so much, and I know you don't like that. It's a good idea. Well, you know what? Thank you for that preview. It's a good idea. I have no intention to marry you. Marry me? <laughs> yeah, and Matt's very good about it. He's all like, oh, thank you. <laughs> he understands how difficult it is for me <laughs> to not hurt him. <laughs> Why must you? You know what, Kel? So you were, you were trying. Yeah. You were trying so hard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. I should have just let you. Yeah. So, so Rimworld. Um, uh oh. I'm not getting the new expansion. I don't think. I mean, no. We already talked about how we're not getting the new expansion, mm -hmm. but um, there are new features. Um, I know about the new features. They're going to be base game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to we'll have... I'm not getting the new expansion really quick. Is every other Rimworld expansion, it feels like it's meant to be part of every game you play going forward from now on, and it all works in concert with every other expansion. Like, you get royalty, and you get, you know, biotech, 
and you get the other one or whatever. And <clears> the thing is, they all add something to the game where it's like, yes, every game I play, this will need to be a part of it because it is now part of the RimWorld experience. Like kids are part of the RimWorld experience. Psychic and powers and, and royalty. Yeah, those are just things that are part of RimWorld now and they will be in every game I play. Whereas this feels very optional. And I there it's like, how are you supposed to play a, okay, we are all little cave people with no technology more advanced than spears. And we are literally wearing like 50s, one strap over the shoulder, uh, Fred Flintstone wear, you know? And we're living in tents. How the fuck are you supposed to deal with like eldritch entities from beyond? Like throw a rock at it? Like, no, that's like an automatic lose state. And that's what I so, would do. It just, it doesn't feel like one of those add-ons where, oh, this will contribute to every game I play from now on. So. Yeah, and it kind of feels like if they're turned on, they're going to happen regardless of if you want them to. Whereas, mm -hmm. like, with ideology, there was stuff in, if you weren't into the religion stuff, mm -hmm. there was still stuff you could put in um, and you could basically say, um, my people don't have a religion, so um, okay. my characters will not, like, give a shit about any of this religious ceremonies and stuff. Yeah. But you still have the things that, like, but came in that pack that are, like, useful outside of the religion. Um, like, you know, fun hats and... Um, different stuff like that um whereas the anomaly like i feel like if i had it but wasn't on if i had it on and wasn't engaging with the anomaly stuff specifically it would fuck up my game like Okay. I'm watching multiple people do playthroughs before I buy it because I had that sense that early on I was like, ah, this is for me. So instead of just jumping in day one like I have for every other, every other add-on, every other DLC, I'm just going to... Uh, I have yet to save this file. Wee! Yeah, that's very responsible. Thank you. But yeah, um, um, I've been watching people play it and I'm all like, I don't know. See, the thing is... You buy Anomaly for the Anomaly content, and I don't really like the Anomaly content, so I don't think I'll be buying Anomaly. Yeah. Um, I've been watching Mr. Samuel Streamer uh, yeah. play. Yeah, it's um, fun watching him and, play it, but I don't think I'd have fun playing it. Yeah, like, it's... Because it's all... A lot of it is pulls from the Call of Cthulhu, like... Yeah. Um, stuff. Issues, yeah. Yeah, well, the co well, there was like a that mod that was Cthulhu cults, and yeah. um, I liked that mod, but I mean, but that's what Anomaly basically is: is that mod yeah. and then a few other mods put together, and like it's cool because since they're now put out by the main studio, it will like work better with the coding, um, like the. Um, one of the main edits to the base game is, like, it reworked how pawns path or, like, take up room, um, in the game, like, processing-wise. So you can now have a much bigger colony yeah. to accommodate, um, like, zombie attacks. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know that. And so, like, that's good, and that I'm glad that they did that, and it helped the game, and that, like, so... This mod, which is basically an official... I, I mean, this DLC, which is basically an official version of those mods, is going to run better than those mods ever did. Um, but I didn't care about zombies when they were a mod. I, I don't care about them now. Um, I will continue to not care about them. Yeah. The thing I see, I, I, I never want to say never because, you know, maybe, maybe some modder will take the new tool set that they've been handed and they will make something super fucking fun I must have. And then I will run, I will, 
you know, take my happy little ass to Steam and I will immediately grab Anomaly because I won't be able to play that mod without it. Like, maybe that will happen. Uh, you know, stranger shit has happened. So I don't want to say I'm never, ever going to get it, ever. And, you know, it's Steam. So it's not the near future, but near enough. It'll be on sale for, like, ten bucks. And it's like, oh, that's what I spend when I want boba tea and some macaron. So why not? And I'll get, maybe I'll get it then and just keep it uninstalled 90% of the time. <laughs> I, I can't say for sure. I will literally never, ever get it. But the way things are right now, as they are, I am not enticed. Um, I kind of hope that the base game adds stuff from dubs by hygiene um Toilet toilets and, and plumbing yeah Ooh. well because tub dubs bad hygiene is a bit a bit little bit um chunky as far as mm -hmm. the mods go um mm -hmm. so like if that became an official thing then they would work better um yeah. it's a little too diapery <laughs> well, maybe you shouldn't have put him in diapers. He's a little loincloth, not a diaper. Okay. All right, all right. I do feel like one day there needs to be a stream where I'm not here. Why? I feel like people come here for story time with Spike, and story oh, time with no. Spike gets frequently hampered by my presence. Oh, everyone loves you. Fuck off. I know, but like, they can indulge one day where Amanda's not here to be like... Reel it in, Spike. I'm a wiener. Oh, no one wants you to. No one wants you to leave, though. No, not forever. For one stream. <laughs> not forever. <laughs> not forever. Uh... Yeah, this is like the first time I've been able to draw all week. This week has been a fucking yeah. Ugh. I took yeah. on, I just finished a week where I kind of took on uh, so many shifts. And then I finished and I was like, okay, I did it. I did it. Let's, let's go back. And they called, hey, we have an, like, can you please come in uh, on one of your days off? Because we have a corporate game. And I'm like, oh, oh. corp. And I was like, corporate games give tips. Okay, I'm going. So I was like, Aw. and And I'm glad. Now, without an hour, now that I'm having all this car trouble, I'm glad I did that. But boy, oh boy, did I want to instead be drawing. Yeah. I'm just going to sit here and hope jury duty doesn't work out. Because, God, I don't want to fucking do it. And, I, you know, everyone's giving me these tips on how to, like, <laughs> not have to Just tell it. them how much you hate cops and that you're a member of the Communist Party. And Oh, no, I'm, I'm a member of the Democratic Socialists. And I think kind of the only it's thing I would have to say is, like, and this is true. This isn't like, I read a thing about it. Someone linked me to it, but I like, I read it. And I was like, oh, that's actually a really good position that it's not about me not getting jury duty. It's like, I genuinely fucking believe this. This is a good thing to, this is a good cause where it's like, they'll put me on the stand and they'll be like, Hey, so do you think you have any issues with, you know, this case? I'd probably be like, um, I'm aware of jury nullification. And if, unless there is violence or the threat of violence involved, I'm going to vote not guilty no matter what on any drug charge. Because I think the fact that this is a criminal offense is bullshit. Well, depending on the type of one, they might just outright ask you that kind of thing. Because yeah, depending on the kind of case it is, both of them are trying to not only pick people, but also eliminate people. So they're going to ask some yeah. interesting questions. Yeah, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Although I have yeah, been and it and it and it might not be a drug case that you're on. So yeah, um, I know I don't know that, but I've also been informed that if my fucking you know pierced face mohawked ass shows up, I'll probably be eliminated in the first round. So why did Let's I draw him so small and her so big? Who knows? I am an enigma. Trying to make pause little couch thing here. Because I figure it's like, see, the thing that I'm I'm really concerned about though is I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out 
I don't think I want it hairy. I think I want it devoid of hair. I think I'm just going to have it. You want what devoid of hair? The pouch slit. <laughs> um, there's not a special concentration of hair on it on like living marsupials. And it's not a, you know, pheromone secreting thing, I don't think. So I don't think I'm going to. Well, the point of pubic hair is also to like keep bacteria and stuff away. Maybe there should be a little hair. So, a little bit. so like, if not, maybe like a lining on the inside? Um, like See, a... on the inside, it's just mucus. Yeah, you don't want fur on okay. the inside. Yeah. Well, I meant like, like we got nose hairs. So like, yeah. the, the equivalent of that, like, uh, at least at the top of the pouch, not all over the pouch. Um, I still have time. I still have this page to figure out. It should be kind of bald, I think. I think so, too. But here's the thing, pencil ears, that I was thinking about, too. That if you ever watch kangaroo births on YouTube, like a normal person, like I have, uh, one of the things that they talk about is when the bean is born, here's the bean, here are its eyes, here's its little gross body. One of the things that they're like completely undeveloped, they're like blind, they're like deaf, they have no, you know, hair or anything like that. But what they do have. Spike is very quiet and the man is very loud. Oh my gosh. See, <laughs> we had this problem when reversed a few times ago, and I don't know why. What they so do have second. is they have big, strong forelimbs so they can grasp their mother's hair as they climb upwards to the pouch. And. Like, the thing that I've been sort of going back and forth on is, like, humans are bullshit, right? We all understand humans are bullshit. And as a result, we're basically helpless when we're born. So I'm wondering, it's like, should I do that? I think I should do that. But the thing is, the reason we're helpless when we're born as humans is it's a compromise evolution has made because we cannot grow any bigger inside a bipedal ape because then we will not be able to come out so mm -hmm. we are born actually less developed than like every other ape we can't like do any of the things that like a chimp or a bonobo or an orangutan can do within like hours of birth we can't do any of that because we're not as developed but we can't stay inside any longer because the birth canal will not be able to accommodate us if we do. And that issue is a non-issue in marsupials because it's a fucking jelly bean. So maybe it should still have. See, this is the kind of shit you think about when you do stupid, fake, you know, world building stuff. You're like, hmm. I'm already doing compromises in general because they're so humanoid like they shouldn't be this humanoid Let's contemplate be the bean just do whatever's yeah. most fun yeah i think that's kind of how i'm defaulting yeah do do you like drawing hair around that area i like drawing hair in general i mean I, on my old webcomic i had a character who had hair down to her ankles just because i like drawing then hair. then i say have them have hair there mm. That's the there. That's the, the hair solution. guy. Like you. drawing hair. Yeah. I think it'd be kind of fun if the girls just had these like giant happy trails because it was like a yeah. remnant of that. Yeah. No. Do it. Um. That. Okay, follow so, your bliss. So assume your marsupial goes from jelly bean to toddler. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, uh, there's a lot of sort not of really perfect dress. nebulous kind of not yet decided on shit in this comic and part of the reason is i like deciding as i'm working on it like i know the overarching themes but i like deciding as i'm working on it like the 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 little details like i am extremely proud <laughs> of the name for their female earth goddess which is the great she that like that's just what they call her great she i'm extremely fucking proud of that but i i made that up like <laughs> climbing path 20 minutes before I wrote it down for the first time. There is no like story Bible for this. It's just, it happens on the page. So is the great she is in the pronoun or, um, 
this it, are you s spelling it differently or um... no it's, it's the great she um they have multiple gods and the female god is the great she I just didn't want them to go with Mother God because that's just like, uh, everybody has a fucking Mother Goddess. That's like, let's, is there a better name for it than Mother God? So, great she. I am excited. I'm excited to finally get this. I want to give Poem a dress where if she sits down right, you just won't even see her. Oh, thank you, Pencil. She'll just be hidden by her ruffles. Yeah, they have vestigial tales too, Bird Wizard. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, Betany is a tail that's kind of like that shaped. And Ta is a tail that's kind of like that shaped. They have different shaped tails. Oops, sorry They're about the noises. Tails. I'm tweaking the audio. And so it's going to. There uh -oh. we go. Uh, Man is ruining everything again. Yes. How many, how many tails is too many tails? <laughs> makes me think of a comic I saw when the new RimWorld dropped which is someone who was, it was like a picture of someone playing RimWorld it was like a drawing of a character in RimWorld and she was like this nine-tailed kitsune with triple E cup tits holding a giant magic wand and then it showed someone going you know quit game and he pressed yes and then, ding, your game has updated to 1.5. And then when he loaded it up again, he was just like a normal human holding a rake. And she started crying. My <laughs> wife is... Like a giant titty kitsune. Um, I'm probably going to hold off playing RimWorld until Pond Morpher has updated. Yeah, because um... he can't have your werewolves until then. No, no, no. The werewolf mod is separate. Um, oh. Pawn Morpher is so I can turn my prison into a produce factory. Um, oh, right. uh, so, um, basically, it's so I can mutate my prisoners um, into having being egg-laying people with udders um, that also grow wool. Um, and they can just sit there and give me wool and eggs and milk um, after I've cut off all their limbs so they can't move. Um, By the yeah, way, secret was... to drawing floofy dresses is figure eights. <laughs> is it? Yeah. You do figure eights and then you erase part of it. That's also how you figure out hat brims um, for like cowboy hats and... Yes. Uh, Wide brim stuff. Um, uh, yeah, so Pawn Morpher is also um, if you tag the DNA of a thrombo spike, you mm -hmm. can turn your leftover prisoners into thrombos and then immediately kill them when they, they're done transforming. Um, and mm. use that to farm thrombo horns. Um, and uh or you can turn them into dogs and they're already know how to do everything they're fully trained because they used to be a person um <laughs> this is making i i and, I and have... then and then you give them pills to forget that they were ever human um and they're stuck as a dog forever yeah that's something that uh you can do with the new dlc but quite frankly it's Nothing you can't do without the DLC, so. You can't turn people into dogs in the new DLC. No, but you can make them forget everything so that they like you. Like, you can capture yeah, but somebody. Then they're not a dog. Um, I, don't I don't need know, another person. I need a dog. Um, or, I don't need a dog. I need a wolf um, that can hunt. Um... I have um, also that mod that's hunt for me, so you can have your um, mm -hmm. uh, dogs and wolves um, kill all the small animals on the map for you. Oh, that's cool. Uh, you know, so they're feeding themselves. Mm-hmm. 
Um, trying to think of. I feel what like this mods? is also Hornies' pencil ears. What? Uh, your description of the mod. Pencil ears is saying, I feel like this is also horny. No, it's just uh, war crimes. Um, yeah, to be fair, farming we're resources. It's jokingly called war crime simulator pretty frequently. Yeah, no, they're getting turned into thrombos so they can immediately be slaughtered for their fur and horn. So, um... Uh, just for those who haven't played RimWorld, um, thrombos are like rare, beautiful that are... unicorn rhinos. Giraffes. Yeah, basically, uh, yeah, they're unicorn rhino giraffes, um, and um, so it's uh, you turn them into a thrombo, and whenever they're at whenever they're turned into an animal in Pawn Morpher they're like unconscious for a day and can't move. So they come out as this super powerful, hard to kill thrumbo that's in a coma basically. Um, so it's easy to murder. Um, and, and then you have all of this very expensive, nice resource. Um, and you can make yourself the finest coats out of your enemies. Um, yeah. Uh, the, one of the mods, well, some of the mods, I think this was the work of multiple mods, I had installed in my last game before I finally gave it up for dead today um, because of the update. It uh, added more complex angles to everyone's sexuality. RimWorld has the mildly problematic, with a T-I-Q-U-E, problematic um, um, element to it, where people who are straight do not have a personality trait that says straight, but people who are uh, not straight have a personality. Well, let me just get biotech through this. Biotech fixed oh, that. Um, oh, they did? That's in biotech now. Um, okay, good. But, so, um, yeah, so that that was added into biotech that there is a sexual, aromantic, hmm. like, um, uh, straight, like, they put, and then, um, uh, the one thing, like, to follow the problematic thing is um, if someone isn't aromantic or asexual, um, it um, just leaves, labels them as straight or homosexual. Um, and um, they only specify um, the difference between romance and sexuality if they're... Um, uh, asexual um yeah, so uh, like it will say uh asexual hetero romantic or mm -hmm. aromantic yeah. straight that was actually a thing i was i didn't know that was base game um but yeah i was i mean really, it's dlc now so yeah i was really enjoying that aspect of the colony i had where basically you know a lot of room world is random a lot of it is random and so the colony that i had I was like, mm, I don't know how I feel about bringing kids into this colony because I'm kind of like trying to do a thing right here and kids, are, you know, they're very time consuming if you want to raise them right. So, you know, art was reflecting life for a minute there where I was like, I don't think I'm going to, hmm, well, I'm going to have to like figure out a way. Like, I think there's just going to be a lot of abortions in this colony. I think that's just going to be how it is. And then they all coupled up in homosexual couples. And so it was two lesbian couples and one gay couple of the six colonists. And I was like, oh, that's convenient. <laughs> like, not only do uh, I get the bonuses for them being in happy relationships, but I don't have to worry about anybody, you know, getting knocked up. This is great. One of the default starts, or one of the starts that I made for myself and saved um, mm -hmm. is called Mad Scientist Lesbians. Um, mm -hmm. Where um, all the characters are lesbians um and um the it it uh spec it gives them like different stuff that they start with um but yeah i always start with uh 10 lesbians um i i make all of them good at one thing um and then start the game that way um but the game took a weird turn 
And suddenly the kids started popping out like crazy because what ended up happening is we had a high mate wander into the map. And that was a very rare occurrence, so I kidnapped her. And high mates will bond to a colonist. The high mates are, I refer to them on Blue Sky as the vat grown fuck pet. And that's literally what they are. They're just, they were literally grown in a tank to be your perfect sexual partner, no matter who you are. That's what a high mate is. Literally, that's what they're for. And when you bring them into your colony, you, you're kind of running down a clock. And at the end of that clock, when that alarm goes off, they bond to a colonist. And you kind of, you can kind of try and force them to bond to somebody. But at the end of the day, it's kind of random who they choose. And this high mate ended up choosing a man. And she began pumping out the kids like crazy. <laughs> Are all the kids high mates now? Um, two or three of them were. Uh, but one of them died. That was really convenient because I didn't really like him. I didn't know what to do with him. Uh, so I was kind of like glad he died. But uh, the other two are, norm are normal colored. No, wait. One's purple. And then two. One's purple. One's sheer white. And then one's like normal colored. And that's kind of boring. I didn't think these sleeves there. I'll fix it later. Yeah. And so the high mate at the end of that colony was having a great old time. Like she was spending all of her time because they're, they are incapable of violence on a genetic level, so they can't defend themselves. So I basically never let her wander beyond the walls of the colony. And she spends all her time as like a school teacher and cooking. She's a mm -hmm. trap wife, basically. She homeschools and she cooks and that's what she does. That doesn't make you, that doesn't make you a trad wife. Trad wife is a mentality. Yeah, but she doesn't go out murdering, so she hasn't got a job. Again. <laughs> I mean, sounds like Most she's normal a cook. Um, yeah, I haven't mentioned human leather hats once. That's like well, so the only reason you haven't is because we're already extremely aware of your human leather hats. You don't need to, <laughs> um, we know. Yeah, so, uh, so, so my mad scientist lesbian start. Um, the, the goal is always to tag every animal so um, they have their pick of what they can turn their enemies into. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I was trying to... Um, I have the... Um, advanced genetics um one where you can make hybrid animals i was trying to make every hybrid last game um uh the i i did um start a werewolf colony um but i i realized a problem uh in my werewolf game which is they can't talk while in wolf form and they are in wolf form every night um mm -hmm. all night so, uh, better hope that a trading caravan doesn't come at night. Uh, Most normal Rimworld conversation. Rimworld um, just leads itself to very abnormal behavior. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so I think, um... I think the last time what? I played, I had a weed-growing cult. That is very cult. easy to do, yeah. Huh? High life is that? Was that the? Uh, was that? The... I have no idea. I don't remember things like that. Oh, because uh, in Rim World you can ha you can found a religion that's just like weed. No, it was it was they they no they were a cult. Oh. They have their own thing. They're entirely their own and thing. They, they, but they also were growing weed for weed. funds. Yes. Oh yeah, dr yeah. I grow a shit ton of drugs in Rim World. That and I make dusters. If I have a really good craftsperson, I make dusters, and I grow a shit ton of drugs. Because no matter who you are in RimWorld, you fucking love drugs. And when I'm trying to make friends with all my neighbors, imagine if you're sitting there and you're talking to a friend and you're like, I don't know about the new neighbors, man. That, they just seem kind of like weird. And then they're like, we got the best drugs. And no, you're like, imagine you're, you're having this conversation. And like, I don't know how to feel about them. I'm kind of on the fence. We'll have... And then the next thing you know, like a weather balloon lands in your yard. And attached to it is 15 pounds of crack. <laughs> that is how I make friends in Rim World. <laughs> I just fucking airmail all my neighbors crack. And then they all love me. And 
some civilizations like the primitive civilizations are like oh i don't like this advanced stuff and then the, like the empire is like oh i don't like this primitive stuff everybody loves crack everybody you just you've never fucking, sent me crack spike just get your ass a fucking psychoid farm and then fucking freebase that shit and pack it into a drop pod and drop pod everyone you can reach crack and you will have fr best friends for life when are you sending me crack uh, Burke Wizard is saying people love drugs and dusters. Always Sunny was right on the money. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, someone made the crew of Always Sunny as like a custom start that mm -hmm. you can download. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I thought that was very funny. Uh, the Charlie, so it's like they made all the characters and then you start with 50 rats. Um, <laughs> Oh, everybody, it is 10.05. Oh, well, yeah. You know, I would like to suggest we wrap it up now because I have had to turn off my air conditioning and I am actually quite warm and uncomfortable. Okay. All right, oh. you've made a good case for yourself. You're I've made a fantastic case. You're dismissed. Everybody, thank you very much for coming. We have a crowdfund going right now. It is for Rigsby, Wisconsin, book one by the amazing cartoonist S.E. Case. This is a fantastic fucking comic. I fucking love it. If you like sarcon sardonic shitty teens, you will love Rigsby. Head on over there. Give it a look. And also we've got some fun add-ons for some unsung heroes of Iron Circus of the Iron Circus publishing line. You can get yourself not only some Eis the double Eisner winning You Died as an add-on, but also John Allen's books, Julian in Purgatory and uh, The Lonesome Era, which are fucking great. And I want more people to read them. Uh, I am Spike. I run Iron Circus Comics. You're on our YouTube channel right now. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. So every time we have one of these little things, you get alerted and you can hang out and listen to us talk about air mailing electronic people crack. The comic I have been drawing is called Blacada. It is about Keebler elves and communism. Blacada.com. HTTP colon slash slash no s on the end because it's a forwarding link it's not a real domain blicada.com b-l-i-k-a-d-a.com it doesn't mean anything go to ironcircus.com because that's iron circus comics it's the publishing company i run check out our strange and amazing books and Lackadaisy is here on YouTube. It is the animated series that Iron Circus Animation is working on by the fabulously talented and Eisner-nominated Tracy Butler. Please watch and please subscribe. We're trying to get the Lackadaisy YouTube channel to a million subscribers so Tracy gets a nice plaque. That would be nice. Thank you. Uh, I'm Kel McDonald. You can read my comics at kelmcdonald.com. I also stream artwork at twitch.tv slash kelmcdonald. Um, I stream during Geek Show, but I also stream Tuesdays and Wednesday nights. Um, so you should come uh, watch me draw uh, my werewolves um, and talk about them. And um, also... Maybe I'll stream Baldur's Gate this weekend and you can watch me do some murders. Um, uh, have a good one. Uh, I'm Amanda, A-M-A-N-D-L-A-F-R-E-N-A-I-S.com. That link is in the description of links to all my stuff and I will post these doodles on Twitter when I finish them.